Hello everyone, it's James Reddy from The Escape Route here with Eric Orlson. Thanks Eric, coming in. All right, We've done this, done this a couple of times yes. with different boots. And what we're talking about today is evolution and then a super exciting introduction to the public of the uh, Hoji Free. We'll get there in a moment. But Eric, this, um, you've got, uh, thank you for bringing that boot in. Uh, <laughs> it represents quite a few different boots, but this is an interesting sort of an evolution things. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to just kind of walk us through that a little bit? Um, you know, we're, ultimately we're getting to the vision and what created this boot, but that yeah. might help you do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's, um, here obviously is the old Vulcan boot, but with uh, quite an addition and renovation. Um, and this is, in fact, the actual prototype, skiable prototype uh, version 4.0, I guess. Uh, skied until failure finally hundreds of days um, but yeah this was the start of the whole Hoji boot project so from this um, the first industrialized project uh, featuring that was the the Hoji Pro and this was you know a pretty progressive boot um, that featured all the kind of advanced design features of the prototypes that have been working on um, and this one, of course, was kind of put into the market with um, the idea of just kind of a, a, gr a good all-around ski touring boot with, with good skiing performance, but it was never uh, directed at, like, the kind of core, you know, more aggressive freeride skiing, freeride touring. Yeah, that being said, I mean, that boot put my TLT7 performances, like, that mm -hmm. used, used to be my kind of light, stronger boot. I don't. I think I put him on twice last year, and I skied this the rest of the time. I mean, it tours so nicely. Yeah. Uh, lots of support and really easy to use, um, which is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It did have the limitation of mm -hmm. we've got this yeah. funky flat nose. The speed uh, nose. Yeah, the speed nose is a, a great evolution for touring, mm -hmm. but had some limitations. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that that was uh, one of the big kind of things. Uh, topics to focus on with developing into what we have now the kind of the second commercial product is the hoji free which the goal was to you know this was the starting point this was the idea the proof of concept this was the starting point in the market and to take you know the success and have a lot of good feedback and there's you know nothing's problem free but yeah. overall like it, it was Problem free, <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. but uh, no. So we took what we learned, a lot of the feedback, a lot of different testers, friends, my feet, you know, everyone involved, and applied that to the free. Um, so why don't I move this oh, yeah. out of the way? Yep. And this is what we're here to talk about. Is exactly. that boot. Boom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, obviously, you mentioned the the sole is kind of the the biggest visual. Uh, change that you can see right out of the box here um, and this is designed to be a MNC compatible is that ISO 9523 right, yeah. sole so that is the kind of this I would say the state of the industry there's a lot of bindings being developed coming out that the focus is the MNC multi-norm compatibility and the bindings range from you know more alpine to the hybrid kind of touring free ride mm -hmm. touring alpine crossover stuff so um super excited that this truly can be a, a boot for people to use with a wide variety of bindings and, and for this category of skiing that's that's super important right. because you know some days you might want to go from the bottom and go ski touring classic ski touring you know two thousand meters plus and then this will allow you to do that with the lightweight bindings. And then who knows, maybe you want to go rip some laps on the mountain here, go up Blackhorn or Whistler, and you have uh, the hybrid bindings. There's many of them now on the market. This is uh, meant to be designed with those in mind. So but once someone spends so much time and effort in making that boot fit their foot perfectly, to have one tool that you can use in, in multiple different arenas is, is kind of that holy grail of boots. Mm -hmm. um, and this one certainly has that from a touring capability. Yeah. You know, that, you know, this, whole, this whole structure, 
was your turn the pants down always concept I mean that's Love that it. is excellent I really like that um, and now when we add this to it you've got that any binding be it you know, be it the shifts or be it whatever you yeah know, different different King defense pins, shift, King pins. these yeah. doesn't matter yeah Fritchy you, stuff. Um, so the vision here was to create that one boot mm -hmm. that's going to give you the capability of skiing lots of different bindings and the strength to do lots of different terrain with yeah. ease of terrain. Correct? And and I mean this, as you said, it's walks. You know the the Hoji Pro the prototype. They have they feature the the really good range of motion for walking freedom, really friction free. Like it's it's quite a nice sensation for walking. Is the goal was to achieve, you know, that kind of performance for uphill, and then when you close it, having something with no play and, and nice and solid. So the, this boot takes it even a bit further. The shell has been redesigned, other than just the sole, but the material thickness, the wall thickness in certain areas, like it's, this is, in fact, a much stronger structure. So the, st the shell itself, so it's stiff, yeah. it provides more stiffness than, than even the uh, OG. Than the free. So free, yeah. material wise, or the pro, free. Sorry, <laughs> sorry pro. Right. Material wise, the pro is grill mid and carbon. This mm. is grill mid, grill mid and fiberglass. It's adding a little tiny bit of weight to it, but it's making it a stiffer boot as well, correct? Mm. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the material weights are virtually the same it's more the thickness okay. so we've added more material like you can i mean i guess you can open it up but um yes total weight difference is 100 grams so it's yeah it's, and, and some of it comes out of the liner as well because right. it's a little bit more stout um but yeah even right here is a good example like the the front kind of walls on the opening of the of the shell here that that's what take a lot of force from skiing forward mm -hmm. pressure and so these are uh, I think more than twice as thick in places like some yeah. thought was put into how do we build this boot up and we obviously don't want to make it heavy but we needed to mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. to certain areas so yeah um, that's one of the improvements as well so adding so we've got a different tongue a bit more material in cases so definitely a stiffer shell to it and the scaffold has changed a little bit you're talking about how they've made a few changes just in molding to that yeah thing. yeah well the, the the main thing i mean some of the feedback we had with the the uh hoji pro was you know people had fitting issues with their malaylis their inside instep kind of uh ankle bone and uh so making a new mold a new last we took as we compiled as much information like fritz had like charts it testers it was it was yeah. awesome um i just said people were paid <laughs> but uh so yeah what, what they were able to do was actually just tilt the walls kind of make it a bit more open and also they created more volume in that area to try and alleviate these you know if you have a, a testing group and a sample group and people are coming back with the same feedback with the same area then you have to take that into consideration and try and resolve that. And uh, I think, I mean, it's it's uh, time will tell, but I I've, I feel personally that that we've done a good job of that. So mm -hmm. it's it's an improvement again. Fit, I mean, fit is so personal in all of these boots, but this one apparently is a, a little bit narrower mm -hmm. than the free. So like a millimeter or so, a millimeter and a half narrower, and the insteps a little different as well, right? Like more volume in the older boot than there is. Yeah, the, it's it's the a, it's uh, there's a few things you're correct. Um, basically, the the Hoji Pro was designed as like a easy to get on, comfortable, well-rounded uh, touring, more classic kind of ski touring boot with uh, good skiing performance. That was the goal. So this, the Hoji Free, is meant to be more of an aggressive. You know, the person wanting more performance. And so a few things we were able to change. We did reduce the width, kind of. <clears throat> if you can imagine the area with the, almost these scales, mm -hmm. that's that's part of the area. Um, just kind of, as you said, about a millimeter and a half. We kept the similar width and kind of the back mid portion of the outside of your foot. Um, we did a lot of studying on that, but that's a 
critical area. And then the heel pocket was reduced by about a millimeter, millimeter and a half in places. And also, um, we kind of created more of like an alpine a tucked in. Yeah, just not like super, we probably played around with that. You don't want <clears throat> a super tight kind of lip there, especially for walking. It works in an alpine boot with a, a fixed cuff, but yeah. there's a certain amount of compromise between walking and skiing that you have to realize. Mm -hmm. um, and then also some of the volume kind of under, the instep is actually, I would say that the same or maybe even a little bit higher because of those walls, but the volume under the, the first buckle, kind of behind the area of your toes, that's been kind brought down a couple of millimeters because that was, you know, some people with lower volume feet, <clears throat> people with high volume feet are like, it's great, it's the most comfortable, yeah. I can feel my toes finally. And so we just reduce that a bit in that area to try and get a, a bit more of an aggressive fit, but still always kind of balancing, you know, you have to wear them and walk. It, you need you need some volume in your, your toes. You can't have a super race alpine boot <laughs> Peter yeah. Pan toe box. No, not if you're up there for the no, day. No, no. Now, there's also some talk of, I know the forward lean on the uh, tour was about 11 degrees. This one, I think, is something like 17 was the number they're using. Is that mostly coming from this spoiler? Or? Yeah, it's uh, they did tilt uh, the cuff. They played around with the geometry. It's a, it's the same. The cuff is the same component. All the all the components are the same, but they they did play with the the position of the the back stopping point and mm -hmm. this a little bit in in the computer programs in CAD and to create a little bit more of an aggressive right. lean. And then also there is this additional spoiler that basically takes the inner surface of the boot and makes it much more in line. Um, <clears throat> the uh, OG Pro has quite a big curvature in the back, so those two things combined give it a, a more forward, slightly more forward position. Right, okay. And then adding to this, I mean, this is one part of it, but what really helps make a boot work is the interior and the whole liner of things. Mm -hmm. So some significant changes on that front? Yeah, um, so for this boot, this project, there was a collaboration with the, the Cetas brand. Um, and yeah, they, the idea was to work with Cetas who does a lot of custom liners and, and different products, fitting products. And they're more in the Alpine side of things, let's say. So to try and set up a collaboration to have uh, their, their experience mixed with Tina Fitz's experience. So this mm -hmm. is the result right now. And uh, yeah, it's a moldable. The goal was to, to, to make it as moldable as possible. Um, that's a must for me in a boot of this nature, um, especially premium product. And uh, yeah, Cetus is into moldable liners, so they that, that's what they provided us. Um, the tongue is designed to be you know, provide sufficient support on top, but ha it has a nice, really a moldable material over the instep to, to try and give the comfort that you will want and allow for the, the range of motion for walking nice and smoothly with no issues, so. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of support through here, mm -hmm. which is yeah, isn't always the case in moldable liners, but still, I mean, they're still focusing yeah. on that ability to tour, which is nice. Yeah, I think it's a good kind of blend between <clears throat> downhill performance, lightweight, and uh, walking performance. So a lot of the boots in this kind of similar category, I think the liners are really, they're just too light. They're just too thin for how strong the shell is mm -hmm. and what kind of skiing you're going to be doing on it. So. The goal is to try and create something a little bit more durable that provided more support without breaking the weight scale. Right. Yeah. Um, and and be moldable, of course. So. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. excited that it's it's a you know it's a different world from what the yeah. OG Pro came with, which is designed as a super lightweight, comfortable liner. So which works and it's it, all it fine, works great, but, but this this will match what this shell is designed for much more closely than that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we've got a number of different densities through here, but they really made that toe quite, um, quite soft. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's a, a kind of a typical CETA's construction in your liners. But yeah, it's a, it's a made to adapt. Yeah. When you mold it with, you know, you can use toe caps and it's a, it's not locked in where the rest of the back of the boot is has some structure around the moldable foam mm -hmm. to try and, you know, give it some rigidity when you're skiing. You and I were talking about uh, sort of three piece shells versus overlap beforehand. And this looks like it's a very nice, clean sort of a structure here. So mm -hmm. it, should, it looks like it's going to be very comfortable for folks. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, I mean, it was a big learning process for, for myself has been there's a lot of liners for ski touring that they put all sorts of cutouts and stitching and liner lace loops, uh, or lace loops, sorry right on the critical area of that malleolus inner ankle bone. So I promise if you look at those kind of liners and try them on and go skiing in them, yeah. there's a good chance you'll have pain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this area is meant to be, we didn't do any gimmicky anything on there and mm -hmm. just make it as clean and as smooth as possible to, to give you the best kind of cushioning in that area, which is a critical point for Many, many people. Yeah. No, I, it, so I, I'm. I think the evolution of you know the whole boot structure. What you've been able to do of getting things to tour extremely well and ski well, and then you know this one here on the tour and the speed nose. Mm -hmm. This one meaning we can kind of do everything with this. Uh, really. Yeah. You and I said that earlier. We learn from every boot. Mm -hmm. We'll learn from this as oh, we yeah. force to do projects. <laughs> but this is a really nice position to be in. Mm -hmm. Is there? Uh, assuming that fit is the same, which it's not, two boots fit differently, but if you could throw your foot in each one and be comfortable in each one, is there any sort of particular, you know, day or any sort of ski missions or we're here in the Coast Mountain Range, I mean, where would you, you know, how do you see this boot <laughs> differing? I mean, you know, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used it, not this exact pair, of course, but, you know, early pr production prototyping for the last year and uh, I used it every single day yeah. and for everything you know I would did, did the spearhead traverse multi-day trip we were actually filming skiing aggressively but walking far with huge amounts of weight and packs and camping gear and uh, you know I happily used that yeah. the, the hoji free that whole tr time that whole trip and then proceeded to finish off the winter, like resort hill banging in the spring yeah. for multiple days. You know, like I think I was spring skiing on the resort groomers moguls for like 20 days in a row, um, just testing different boots. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that kind of, you know, hitting the drain park, the old guy with the touring bindings to the backpack <laughs> doing a janky 360. But uh, that's, what I, that's what I like is like it, this boot for me, is a tool that I can happily go ski tour as far and as high and as much vertical as I want and get to the top, close the one buckle, and be ready to ski down and do my job as an athlete. Yeah. If you yeah. can call it that. <laughs> I would call you an athlete, buddy. You're still there. So mm -hmm. that's good news. And just go ski, ski around the resort. Have fun. Like, yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's always for six, for almost six years now. It's, it's <laughs> coming up to sixth birthday. And uh, from the beginning, I was always, I don't want to change my boots on top of the mountain. It's a, my friend Fritz Bartel. That's his, like he kept saying that to different people throughout the company because it's such a hard thing somehow to think of both activities from the very beginning of the design of a boot and come out with something that really achieves both of those without too many sacrifices. Ski touring has always been kind of a bit of a compromise. You're making that decision between walking and between skiing. Mm -hmm. That gap, I mean, here, look at these, right? First, ski, <laughs> first skis to ever do the spearhead. That's awesome. Look what that is, right? Uh, compared to, and think of the boots that were being worn on that oh, yeah. day. Leather. Yeah. To now, that gap between skiing mm -hmm. and walking is being minimized, minimized, yeah. minimized. And this looks to be one of those best boots to put it on, make it fit your foot, be comfortable with it, and use it all year long. Yeah, that's that's yeah. 100% what I'm, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Well, so. it looks looks like you've done it. Uh, thank you for coming in, you know, showing us through these yeah. boots. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, our pleasure. It's uh, been super fun to see this evolve, and 
it's early September, we're just getting set. First snows on the mountains today, it was kind of nice to see that. It gets everyone kind of jazzed yeah. and uh, I'm looking really forward to getting out on this. So, all, right. all right, thanks cool. Mike, appreciate you coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. Cheers.